Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight for this toast to Stetson baseball. Unfortunately, we have to do it virtually this year, which is not what we, any of us wanted, but it's good that we can all gather and be here and support the baseball program, which we all love. Uh, for anybody that does not know me, I'm Alex Heron. I'm the Assistant Director of Alumni and Parent Engagement at Stetson University. So some of the work that I do, I work with our admission staff in putting together accepted student receptions for accepted students and their families, and then work on general alumni and parent events. And then great events like this, I get to work with our athletics coaches and staff to put some of this stuff together, which we really appreciate. They're great partners with us, so we try to be great partners where we can with them. And of course, anything we can do to support Steve Trimper and the baseball team, we will absolutely do. So again, thank you all for joining tonight. Uh, we're gonna make it about an hour and we'll go over some, a few things. We'll have some time for questions. If you have questions as we go along, feel free to drop them in the chat box and we'll address what we can tonight. Uh, I'll take care of that. So I'll monitor the chat box if you have any questions as we go. We're also joined by uh, Stetson's Director of Athletics, Jeff Altier, also a Stetson grad. And then we've got a couple uh, seniors from the baseball team, Georgie Arenas and Andrew McNeil on with us tonight. They'll drop a few remarks in as we go as well. So first, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Altier. As I know, we've got a lot of questions about COVID protocols, tickets, uh, new members of the ASUN, all things related to that. Jeff's going to speak on. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jeff. Thank you, Alex, and, and welcome, everybody. It's exciting to get ready for the start of the baseball season. Uh, it's a great time of year for me, and, and I'm always looking forward to it. And hopefully, we'll be down at a few games, uh, seeing our mayor and, and many of you at the games as well. Um, Alex, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with the new membership to the ASUN. I know there's a lot of interest and a lot of questions that have has been generated over the last month. Uh, because the ASUN announced uh, three new members, uh, Eastern Kentucky University, Central Arkansas, and Jacksonville State University. All three will be members that join us uh, with next season. Uh, and they're all three football playing schools. And so I've gotten a lot of questions about, does this mean we're going to play scholarship? football next year and the answer is no no we're still set Stetson will remain in the pioneer football league and we'll continue to play we love that membership we love the national uh, scope of that uh, and the schools that are in that league they associate very well with who we are and we just like that affiliation so we're not changing out of that but the three new members in the ASUN will you'll begin seeing them next year uh, in our competition, in our schedules. Uh, they are pretty strong Division I members which do nothing but stabilize the conference and allow for us uh, an opportunity to compete against more strong Division I teams. So we're excited about the addition of all three of them and look forward to uh, next year in competing with them. In regards to our COVID pro protocols for uh, this spring, uh, as you can well imagine, we've been rehearsing them and practicing them and implementing them uh, this whole year. Uh, with basketball particularly, we've had a lot of games uh, that have been played. We've actually had about 80% of our scheduled games uh, have been played. And that's about what the average is for our conference. So what that means is that there will changes and adaptations as this year goes on. And I want to share with all of you just a little bit of our experience with basketball because I'm pretty sure it's going to pertain to what uh, is going to take place this spring with baseball and with all of our sports. In basketball, what we know is that every week we're probably going to play somebody. And there's an 80% chance that that game will take place. But who the game was originally scheduled with and who we compete is anybody's guess. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make every opportunity possible to just provide competitions for our student athletes and for our coaches. So every week when we go into the week, we anticipate as an example with baseball this weekend that we're going to play uh, games against Florida A&M University. And hopefully all of our testing will take place and everybody will come out of the testing with negative results, which will allow us to proceed and play the game this weekend. But there's a very strong likelihood that one of the two teams will have people test positive in which we'll end up either 
playing that opponent or not playing that opponent. And if we don't play that opponent, we'll try to schedule somebody else in that slot as we move forward. So I just tell you that because it is and it continues to be a moving target for us. What we do know is we want to play games and we want to give our student athletes, uh, Andrew McNeil and Georgia Renas who are on this call, we want to give them every opportunity to play their, uh, their senior year or fifth year or junior year, whatever that actually is for them. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Uh, when you come to the games and when you get a chance to start coming and being a spectator to the games, uh, there'll be all kinds of protocols. We'll take your temperature at the same time. We, we look through your uh, personal items to make sure everything is clear. Uh, we'll, we'll ask you a few questions to make sure that you haven't been exposed to COVID recently, and then we'll admit you into the game. And then when you get to the game, you'll have to remain six feet separate from everybody except for your your closest friends or your, your family members. But those will be all clearly explained to you when we get to that point that we're allowing spectators at the contest. For this weekend, what we have been permitted to do from our Safer Stetson Task Force is allow our team to have a um, pass list, which what that means <clears throat> is that your student athletes uh, and coaching staff will be able to identify uh, two people each on who they can put on that pass list to attend the game, uh, to, to attend each of the games this weekend. I know that's not what we wanted. It was not ideal. I know everybody would love to come to the games, and we have hundreds of seasons of ticket fans who are going to be disappointed for this weekend. But to make sure that we keep the entire community safe, We've got to adhere to this protocol as we continue to move forward. So that's what's going to happen this weekend. We are reviewing again with the Safer Stetson Task Force. That's the group that makes the decision on how many people we can allow to attend the games. We're going to review with them again next Tuesday on what happens, and then we'll, we'll move forward and let you know next week if we're allowing any other people to attend the games. I see that uh, Mayor Apgar has his hand raised. Would you like to ask a question, Bob? Yeah, yes, I would, Jeff. In terms of the protocol, uh, uh, the elderly like me that have now been vaccinated, is that going to vary the protocol or uh, any of that? Because after two weeks, we're supposed to be, you know, free from quarantine uh, under the CDC guidelines. Any answer to that? Because you do have a lot of fans in my my age group? That's a great question. I will tell you, uh, Mayor Apgar, we have not uh, built that into our protocols yet, but I believe we could because uh, I know that you end up getting a, a, a card that certifies that you've been vaccinated twice, and I will, will revisit that or I will visit that for the first time with our Safe and Stetson Task Force on Tuesday to see if that will permit people to do that, and I will let you know next week on what that result is. Good. Is, are there any other questions? Well, wonderful. With that, Alex, I will turn it back to you and I'll be on in case there are other questions and we can go forward. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you for the update. We definitely appreciate it. So I'm going to welcome in uh, head baseball coach Steve Trimper now just to give everybody an update on, you know, I know we had a lot of questions and Concerns about how the season ended last year abruptly. We were looking real good. It was a tough way to end the season last year. Kind of what it looked like going through that and getting ready for this season to start. So I'll turn it over to Steve. Yeah, well, welcome everybody. And, and thank you, Alex, for having me on and, and uh, Georgie and, and Jeff Altier and, and Andrew McNeil to talk a little baseball. Um, you know, typically we do the first pitch banquet. Um, if you're familiar with the program, you know, usually a couple weeks prior to the first pitch, we do the first pitch banquet on campus or at the Wayne Sanborn Center. And we've done that over a couple of years since I've been here and, and when Coach Dunn was coaching here. <clears throat> and that event was basically just to kind of go over and meet the team and, and find out what, uh, what's new coming up and what we have going on. And uh, obviously, we couldn't do that this year. So Alex came up with the idea to have uh, this little Zoom call where I think we're all getting accustomed to Zoom calls now and all of our workforces, just to kind of talk through some of the things that we've been doing and share some of the stories. Um, along with, at the end, uh, I think we're going to have a toast. I know we just got off the field. I'm still in my practice gear and 
Georgie and Mac clean up a lot better than I did. I don't know how they did it so quick because we were like five minutes uh, to get in here. So we'll end up with a toast of water for us and whatever your adult beverage is, I guess, to toast the season. But, um, you know, I I'm going to speak about the team in a second and where I think we're at and all the schedules and all the things we're doing. But, you know, it's been a, I feel like a rookie coach this year. Um, I think back to when I first started as a head coach in 1999, and I have a similar feeling because this has been so new for me. It's been so new uh, coaching older guys, um, guys that have a lot of maturity physically and mentally. Um, I've never coached such an older team. Um, I've never coached 49 ball players uh, on a roster. Um, that's been a challenge. Um, I've never had to worry about 10 minutes in a locker room with certain groups and six feet and trying to worry about direct contacts to see if we can continue to keep have our players practicing as the weeks go on in the fall. But, um, you know, with all that being said, we had so many challenges to get everybody back on campus as an athletic department. And our guys did such a great job. We had our full normal practice schedule. We did our individuals for the first couple of weeks. We jumped into our 20 hour weeks and practiced and scrimmaged. And we had no shutdowns. We had very few kids that missed. Um, we had a couple of cases that wasn't a lot. It wasn't a lot of symptomatic cases. We had a few that had to quarantine. And we continue to get our uh, guys better. And I, I can tell you that there's only one way that happened, is that the guys were really serious about baseball. They, they did a great job uh, outside of the stadium, outside of the classrooms, and, and really trying to be safe and not have a super spreader event or anything like that. And they really wanted to get better. I think we all remember getting the call going into University of Pennsylvania last year and told our season was canceled. We, we were on the field in uniform and we found out as a shock and we, we felt like we had a good team in 2020. We felt like we were off to a good start. We were excited to play Florida and that game got rained out. We bumped them to the next week. We knocked off UCF, which Right after we beat those guys, they went on to sweep Auburn and ended up ranked sixth in the country that week. The polls came out. So we felt like we had a signature win on our schedule. And then to get it all kind of just crumbled apart for all of us. It wasn't just about baseball. It really was a, a, a shocker. And um, I think what we kind of took on as a, as a persona was anytime we had a bad day or anytime the weather was not good this fall or anytime we were having those tough practices where people were really – sweating through t-shirts because it was hard work. We just kind of re-energized ourselves with thinking back what the alternative was. And it kind of got our team set right back into trying to get ourselves a little bit better every single day. You know, it's one of the things we talk about all the time. We're not trying to be better than Florida State today. We're not trying to beat Gulf Coast today. We're just trying to practice better than we were yesterday. And when you take a normal team of 35 individuals, heck, this year with 49, all you have to do is just do a little bit more and the whole organization gets better as the weeks go on. And so that was our principles this fall to try to grow our team. Now, typically competition is great. I've always said internal competition is outstanding as long as we know that we're working hard to get to the greater of the team to have success. Well, this fall was a great example of that when we had, you know, seniors back, we had very good freshmen that were supposed to get drafted that came to school. We had, returning kids that were supposed to go in the 10th to 20th round that didn't get drafted. So there was a lot of competition on our team and our team just handled it really well where they were just trying to make sure that they were trying to do what they can to get better every day. And I saw our team grow. Um, you know, fast forward to this spring, you know, finals were a little bit earlier back in the fall. They went home with a longer break and then everybody came back in here the first week of January and they did all their lifting, they did their throwing programs, they did everything. So we didn't miss a beat coming back into this. And I tell you, it's really um, nice coaching such a veteran group because when you're typically talking about bunt plays and defenses and pickoffs and what are you doing with a runner at second base and we're teaching those things day to day, those things are happening in practice, but they're not only spot on because our guys are veterans, but they're teaching the younger guys. And it's really remarkable for me to sit back and watch our older group, two of them are on the call, I'm going to speak in a minute, and of, of how wonderful it is to watch those guys teach the younger ball players and build them along and have them get better for our team. You know, we don't know what to expect going into this. We don't know if we're going to test tomorrow and we lose our starting shortstop or our catcher or our Friday night guy. 
And so we're just going at it is that we're just going to be blessed that we're playing baseball games. We feel like we're going to go in and compete every single weekend against whoever we're playing. And then we're just going to try to be healthy and safe all the way through. Because I think the teams that are going to go to Omaha this year are the teams that actually stay out of COVID quarantine. <laughs> I've said that. If you can avoid that, you might get a great chance of having a great RPI and wins and, and go to the end of the year and get to, to regionals and super regionals and move on for there. So, um, you know, we started practice back on January 29th. Um, we've been going at it full tilt. We've been having a lot of scrimmages. Um, we're getting a lot of batting practice, a lot of our defensive work in, um, and we're really building ourselves up. In fact, we just finished a scrimmage uh, not more than a half an hour ago. We got rained out this weekend, so we had to bump some of our, um, our relievers to throw this week um, today so we could get those guys ready for the weekend. But we're excited to start this week. Um, you know, you're going to see uh, uh, probably a veteran ball club with a lot of talented freshmen that are going to get out there and younger ball players uh, that are going to help us out. Um, I think right now, if I was to tell you about the three things that we focus on, which is pitching, defense, and, and your offense, um, I think that our defense is, is as good as it's been. Um, we have some physically good people. Um, arms are strong. Outfield arms are above average. Catchers are very accurate, very good blockers, very good catchers. Um, our defense in this infield is one of the things that we pride ourselves on, being in such a big ballpark. You got to play defense and you got to pitch in this ballpark to win. Um, and I'm really excited about our infield play. We have a lot of inter interchangeable parts over at first base. Oh, I have those lights in here, guys. You have to wave your arms sometimes when they go out. Sorry about that. Um, you know, we like our first base DH right field situation with Hernan Sardinius, a transfer from the University of Maine. Um, Eric Fago, who's turned into an outstanding outfielder who didn't play a lot out there last year. And Brandon Hilton, who plays first base and DH. That's a really nice combo we have going on there. Um, so we'll see, you know, Ryan Guida is a freshman that's been playing really well. He's kind of a, a good bat off the bench. He's been getting a lot of hits for us, too, that can get some time. And, and I could certainly start picking through and dissecting all the weeks, our, our players on our team and, and what we think. But we think we have a strong roster. Um, the schedule is one of the best I've seen um, in all my years coaching. I think it's a very good RPI schedule. Um, when Jeff Altier first hired me, I will never forget the day that he said, hey, look, Every year, our goal is to try to get 40 wins. Because if we can get to 40 wins, we got a good shot of putting ourselves in an at-large situation. You see, the way to the tournament, for those that don't know, is you got to win your conference tournament at the end of the year, and you get what's called the automatic qualifier. And that takes up about 32 bids of the 64. The other 32 bids are decided by a committee. It just so happens that our athletic director on the call is the chair of the committee. So... He does like certain kinds of high-end stuff. You know, bribery will work with Jeff. I've learned that. So, um, no, I'm just kidding. That would probably be illegal. So, it's a joke. Scotch. Yeah. Scotch. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so, Jeff's committee actually takes on the at-larges. And so, typically, with 40 wins, that's what you're shooting for. But those wins are culminated by the power rankings that you get from the teams you play. Well, we don't have any teams that are ranked probably in that bottom 200 on our schedule this year. You might get a, a northern team that might not have a great start that's ranked down there, and that's what usually some of the southern teams play. I've been on the opposite end of that stick for my most of my career. When I used to come down here uh, from Maine, and I got all the bleacher creatures heckling me the whole time when I'm the Maine coach, and now they're on my side. So I was able to flip them over to, to my side. So, um, But, you know, this year with the teams we're playing, like, you know, four games – against Florida. You know, Florida State, of course, as we always play those guys. Uh, five games against FIU, five games against South Florida, uh, Alabama, Wichita State. You know, those are our non-conference games. Just to mention a few, our RPI is going to be up. So this is one of those schedules that instead of that 40 wins, maybe we're in that 35 or 36 wins to get us in that consideration for an at-large if we don't happen to win the tournament at the end of the year. So, um, you know, um, I think we could go on and on. I think the other thing I'd like to mention is we've been doing a lot of this thing called Fastball Fridays. It's been a really big hit. Um, it was thought up because we usually do an email out weekly to our members and our parents. And I sit here and write it. And sometimes the players write it. And then with all this COVID stuff, we do all these Zoom calls. And I've never, uh, I've, I've always believed that communication is so key. And, you know, it's not fun when you pick up the phone and you call somebody and they goes to voicemail. And then they text you and say, hey, what's up? And you're like, well, pick the phone up. I want to hear your voice and your emotion. So I'm a big 
communicator by, by voice. So all these Zoom calls have gotten us into these type of situations. So we thought of the idea, why don't we just do videos instead of typing on a keyboard all the time? So that's what that was thought up by Mark Machado, our director of ops. And we've been doing those recently, sending out some little stories. But moving forward, they're going to really be designed to tell you about the week. You know, what did we do so well? How, who played great? What did we do that we need to work on? Why did we throw three balls to the outfield on pickoffs? Well, we got to work on that in practice. That's what we got to get better at. So to share kind of the, the teams we're playing and, and give you an inside clip, almost like a coach's chalkboard session of how the weeks are going and what we can expect moving forward. So we're excited about that. Ricky Hazel, our sports information director, associate athletic director is on the call here listening. He wanted me to mention that he worked very hard over the last couple months on our virtual program. There's no more printed copies. So if you click on um, gohatters.com, you'll see all of our records, all of our season previews. Everything that you would have picked up in a program is available online for you to view. So make sure you get a chance to see those things. So um, again, I'm sure we have a ton of questions, which I, we're going to get to answer in a second. Um, I could either answer them as we go, or maybe we can have the captain speak a little bit, kind of coattail on the back of what I said, as far as what it's like through a player's eyes. And then we could open it up to questions about the team or anything going on. So um, Alex, maybe I can just be the one that introduced the captains at this point. And um, let's see. Georgie, Mac, I don't know if you guys do rock, paper, scissors like we do in the outfield. No one knows that except for us, but maybe you can tell the story. Uh, but one of you guys can start. Who gets to go first? Uh, I'll go to make it tougher on him after me. Um, <laughs> sorry, Mac. Um, yeah, so Coach Sherper touched on a lot of the things. Um, this year, it's really been just honestly a blessing to be back on the baseball field for Mac and I and a lot of older guys. Um, that day we got the call that season's canceled. It was kind of one of those things that, like, it can't happen. There's no way it's going to happen. You, you think you played your last college baseball game and and you didn't even get a chance to think about it ahead of time. So um, that early on in the season was a, was a scary thing for us. And we're just more than anything grateful to be out there with a big, a big group of guys. Um, this year with all the guys we got, I think it's uh, – a very special circumstance that we have so many uh, freshmen and so many transfers. Like Trimper said, we're, we're deep in every position. I mean, when we take IO, you got three guys to position and each guy just, just as good as the next. Um, so it, it's something that gives you a little more confidence going into opening weekend. I know Matt could attest to this, just over the years as the program has been developed um, in-house and outside with recruiting, you've seen just how much better our recruits have gotten how much better our lineup has gotten over the years. And I say it every year, I sound like a broken record, but I mean, I think it's a good trend to see that we, we definitely look better each year. And I think this is a, the year that we have the most depth, definitely the most depth that I've seen in five years. I mean, if we have a big arm that goes out, we got three more guys that can step up and fill the role. We got plenty of guys to run deep late in ball games, uh, late innings when we need it in playoff situations. and we got that veter veteran uh, mentalities with all the older guys and even transfers. So I guess I'd say I'm, I'm just more excited than anything. And I think you guys should uh, be ready to expect a bunch of guys with fires lit under them because we've been waiting to get out there for, for a whole year now. So, yeah, I mean, I, I got nothing much more than that. All righty, I'll go ahead and hop on. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Andrew. Um, I think George did a great job touching on how much depth and how much talent we have this year with such a deep roster. Um, so many returning veterans, um, a lot of transfers from different schools, and then obviously our incoming freshmen. Um, so I'm going to hit more on the culture side. That's something Coach Trimper has really preached a lot um, since, since he's been our coach here is how, regardless of how, how much talent you have, building that gel, that culture that holds your team together, that's really what takes you far there at the end of the season. And so building that culture relies on a lot of leadership and a lot of communication and building personal relationships with your teammates. And as you can imagine, that's been very tough th this fall. I mean, you lose a little bit of face time because you can't be hanging out with guys very close with all the COVID protocols. We're split up in the locker rooms, distance all the time. Um, but honestly, we've done an incredible job of making sure that we build those connections. Um, one thing that though George and I might not have liked it so much because we're grad seniors, we had a team study hall for everybody on the team. And so there you get, you get a group of eight guys, um, get some new faces in there. And so you get to start to build those relationships. 
and build our team culture, really what we, uh, we want our team to be founded on. And I think that's gonna uh, be really crucial for us here um, going into the season. Um, and like George said, I'm just blessed to be back and, and have the opportunity to play here one more time. Um, I, I love this team and love the coaching staff. And I think uh, it's, it's based on these scrimmages that we've had this spring, everything's coming together very nicely. And uh, we're playing very clean baseball and just hoping that all of our hard work and preparation will translate this spring. So looking forward to seeing you guys out of the games this year. Yeah, and if, if I could touch one more thing in there, Mac always does a great job of public speaking, but uh, I think on behalf of us and the whole baseball team, we'd like to say thank you to administration, um, Jeff Altier and everybody, Eric Weinberg, everything you do from the outside. I mean, getting a collegiate baseball season together in itself at a D1 level is ridiculous to do, but to get it to go during COVID and all this that's going on, um, you really got to have a supporting staff and a good good director and just and just coaches and staff who's just ready to do whatever they have to do to get a role. And when it comes down to our trainer and anybody else in the ATC, um, there's so many things that go on behind the scenes. So at this point, I think everybody should just recognize the fact that we're just blessed to be playing on Friday and ready to start our new season. Yeah, just to, to echo these two guys, I think um, uh, there is a lot behind the scenes that goes on um, that makes us tick. It's not just one person. And and um, I think sitting back and listening to these two guys, we can talk baseball all night long. I mean, we can talk about the hit and run and who's doing this. My proudest moment is when people like Georgie and Max stand up and speak and, and, and really represent our program well. And they're, they're just great leaders of our team. And there's a lot of guys on that team that, that rely on their leadership and what they've done. And they, they've, they, they've touched so many people in their time here on our current team that are going to be great leaders down the road too. Um, the little joke was, is I, is I brought these guys in here in the beginning of the fall, and it was typical Trimper time where I'm like, guys, I got this great idea. We're going to have you step up and be coaches, and you're going to help run study hall with these young guys, and we're going to have this competition. I'll buy you a steak dinner if you win it. And they probably left here like, what the heck? But we did end up getting a 3.147 uh, 3 team GPA with 49 people uh, this past fall um, because of their efforts and everybody else. Uh, I did take one group out to uh, Stockyard last week because that was part of the bet. If they came in second place and the other one got to use uh, all NCA compliant, by the way, uh, my Nike dollars or BSN dollars for uh, a pair of shoes for the first place winner. So um, they were, they were fighting for shoes and steak dinners, which you didn't think that would motivate them that much, but that's what it did. So I'm going to start buying them more steaks if they get better grades. So, um, but yeah, they've done such a great job, uh, you know, leading this team and the culture part of what we're going to do. And, and it is a challenge. Um, try, you know, we usually have team meetings and we do leadership stuff and we have guest speakers come in and we read books and we do all these different things to try to help ourselves become better leaders. And I learn a lot from these guys, but we were, we were really missing this this year. So we had to kind of pivot and learn how to do that in different ways. And uh, they certainly did such a, a great job of leading that. So um with that said, Alex, I don't know if we want to open it up to all kinds of questions. Maybe you can read some or people can unmute themselves uh, to talk about anything uh, that we could try to help answer. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll go ahead and open up the floor to anybody that has any questions. Uh, like Steve said, feel free to drop them in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself, you can do that as well. We did have one come in in the chat. Coach, will we be able to find out what protocols will be for road games through Stetson or will we need to contact the host school? Jeff, that might be a good question for you because I think you've been dealing with it with basketball. So maybe you can kind of see how some of our other A Sun programs are getting after it and, you know, our non conference team. Yeah, typically, what, what we'll be able to tell uh, all the parents and, and fans is what they're permitting us on a pass list. But as it relates to what they're allowing for spectators coming into their facility, a lot of the institutions will just be broadcasting that on their web page. So part of it is, is both uh, what information we have we'll share. But for the most part, what we'll know about is the pass list to the games and what we're being uh, provided. Uh, and then for the rest of it, and as most of you understand, the, the uh, 
participants, the spectators, it, it's dynamic and it's really, uh, how is it right now? How is the uh, positivity rate on the campus? What is the uh, hospitalizations like locally? And that's what's dictating a lot of the different protocols. So we'll just have to keep, it, keep watching it and up to the last moment to see what's happening. All right, thank you, Jeff. Uh, Mayor Apgar, I know I see your hand up. I don't know if that's from earlier. Yeah, um, per personal comment for the the parents that may be new to the program, uh, I, I just want to assure you that the city of the land uh, will do everything that we possibly can to, uh, you know, be good partners uh, through the COVID crisis, uh, as well as I'm talking beyond the, the general field maintenance and things that we do. Uh, We've been partners in the stadium since uh, 1999, and, and uh, I've been a season ticket long holder long before that. But here, here's the question I have, and it's both for Steve and, and for Jeff. You're seeing it in basketball. I won't mention the conference, but it's a conference I follow regularly. And in basketball right now, one team of a high RPI has played – only five conference games, and most of the rest of the conference has played seven or eight. Now I realize, so, so, so the point, I guess, Jeff, is has there been any discussion about, you know, how the committees, both, you know, basketball or baseball, are going to handle the, some of the inequities that happen? And then the, the second part of that for Steve is, um, have you already kind of got some contingency plans in your back pocket? You know, when you have rainouts with UCF, you know, it may be easy to slide that game in, you know, midweek. But if you lose a three-game series with somebody, uh, now back to RPI and, you know, wins and losses and all those kinds of things. So uh, I, I think that's going to be a, an additional challenge for, for the program. So that's my question. And, uh, Jeff, uh, whichever one you want to start. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start, Steve, and just address the issue about what is the committee looking at as it as it moves into the season. And and we have discussed uh, are there different ways for us to look at it? Like, what is the impact on RPI? Uh, what would be the minimum number of games that we would consider a baseball team would have to play in order to qualify for a uh, the championship and to be in at large uh, or even just get into the tournament. So we've looked at all of those. And Bob, candidly, what we decided is we, we got to the point that says it's too soon to make decisions on those because there's too many variables yet unknown. At, at one point, and you may recall this, uh, there was uh, many conferences that were talking about playing conference-only schedules. And uh, we discouraged that as a committee because going to a conference-only schedule doesn't allow us any comparative data to see if the Northeast Conference is better than the SEC or better than the ACC or the Atlantic Sun. And so for us, we encourage them to allow that to occur uh, so the games, we can at least have some comparative analysis. What we have decided is that the traditional RPI rating, which is one of the statistical ways we look at the performance every year, will only be a very small part of our decision. And what's going to end up happening is we have committees, which are called regional advisory committees. We'll lean very heavily on those because those committees are made up of head coaches of all teams in those regions, and they'll meet every three weeks and discuss who are the best teams that they've played against and who are the best teams within their uh, conference and within their region. And then they'll bring that forward to us to help us in the evaluation. But it's gonna be a challenge. Um, we, we keep talking about it. We don't know how we're gonna end up sorting through it all. Uh, but we do know that it's going to be that one-on-one, -on -one, face to face coaches reporting to us where we're going to gain a great deal of the information on making decisions on that. And to everybody here on, on the call as well, I just want to publicly uh, make sure that everybody recognizes that uh, 
uh, Bob is is a tremendous fan, and he is the critical reason we have Melting Field at Conrad Park. We do not have that facility if it wasn't for his support and for his enthusiastic leadership in helping make that happen. So, Bob, I just want to publicly again thank you for all that you do for not only baseball but for Stetson University as a whole. So, can I get in on Friday? No, I'm kidding. The parents need to go on Friday but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, Bob, I, I, to answer your second part, um, I, I actually made the statement that the hardest thing I've had to deal with this year is the COVID restrictions and trying to get everybody to be safe. The second hardest thing was scheduling. Um, we have switched so many things around, uh, starting back when we had a – we were supposed to open up with the University of Delaware, then University of Michigan was coming in week two. I mean, everything is just gone for what we had. We're scheduled all the way out to 2024. Um, I don't know if people realize that, but – you know, Jeff Altier, myself, we sit down and look that far out and think about our non-conference weekends. And then a conference schedule gets just given to you. So when all this happened, we would just kept switching and switching schedules. And then we had a cancellation. Then we thought we had it right. And then we lost our first two opponents. And then, you know, we got on a call, believe it or not, in the state of Florida, all the Division One head coaches. And we just agreed that if one of us was going to uh, get stuck late, we would do everything in our power to help out. So you can see there's a weekend where we were scheduled to play Wichita State only, and now FIU is in that weekend. That happened because they lost their opponent, and we agreed to help them out, you know, because, you know, they're just stuck. They didn't have anybody to play. So we're going to do a three-team, four-game tournament. Um, ironically, there's a, a school in North Carolina that we wish we didn't go to in 2018 in June, and we thought they should have been here that reached out to me on Sunday night and asked if they could come down this weekend and play. And uh, obviously with all the testing protocols and, um, and what's going on, it was just too soon to help them out. We would have loved to, but it just couldn't happen. And so uh, you can see that already. I can see it this weekend. People are getting canceled and um, um, are changing things around right now. So we anticipate we'll have some changes. There is one conference rule that we put in this year that um, our conference office has the right to take one of us and put us at another site at the last minute to play a three-team four-game weekend. So let me give you an example. Let's say we're supposed to go to Gulf Coast and, you know, God help us or God forbid, you know, don't wish this on anybody, but let's say they had an outbreak and we can't go down to play them in conference games. <clears throat> we can get sent to Jacksonville to play North Florida and Jacksonville and play a three-team kind of setup for the weekend to get games continuing to go. And so we're all flexible. That could possibly happen to keep games and try to get as many games in as we can. I think there's one other interesting point, too, to tell you about the RPI and schedules. I don't know if anybody really looked at this, but typically the college baseball regular season is 14 weeks, okay? Then you play one week of your conference tournament, and then that Monday morning when that's done, the regionals are announced. We're playing a two-week conference tournament this year. And so it jammed our 56 games, not into 14 weeks, but into 13 weeks. So the first round of the conference tournament is the South Division, which is brand new, and will play a, a tournament, and the North Division will play each other. And then those teams that win that weekend, they move on to the finals the next weekend. So we had to jam those extra games into that week, the 13 weeks to get – 30, uh, 56 games so you can see we're playing four games on opening weekend we're playing four games next weekend non-conference against North Alabama one of our conference opponents but we weren't playing them this year and they lost their weekend and we lost our weekend four weeks ago both teams canceled on us and so we actually just contact each other and say let's play non-conference and they're coming down so you can see we're playing a couple of those non uh, four game weekends uh, to make up those games that we would normally play in that extra week of play as we're going forward All right. Those are great questions and some great responses. And then just a couple other uh, comments in the chat to note of. So Ricky Hazel dropped in the chat. There are links to the opponent's ticket information in the virtual program. So if you scroll back up in the chat and click on that virtual program link Ricky dropped, you can find some information about opponent's ticket information for anybody traveling. And also I can follow up if everybody wants after this. We are recording this tonight. So if anybody wants to watch it again or wants anything you might have missed in the chat, I'm happy to send that to everybody afterwards as well. Alex, I have a quick question. Go ahead, Nick. 
All right. Um, this is mostly for Georgie and Mac, really. Uh, I want to commend them for their determination of returning. You know, there's probably many options, especially with family or going off to work, that you want to come back and get this get this done for this last season. Um, looking back to 19, that was a heartbreak at the end. And, you know, 2020 was another heartbreak. Uh, also for Trimp, maybe, what what is the conversations like to the new guys, all the new faces in the clubhouse, about how long this season is going to be and how many roadblocks there are and, and – how how are you uh, motivating their focus? I say to get to the end, to get to that 56, and to hopefully end up with a good record and move on. You know, it's, it's going to take a lot of focus, a lot of motivation, especially for high school kids who are coming out of a maybe 20, 30 game season. This is a whole new ball game for them. Um, really, just want to know what that conversation is like and um, what what those words will be on Friday night when you go to take the field for the first time. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would. What's up, Nick? First of all, and Nessie over here. Um, for those of you who don't know, Nick's one of our uh, biggest fans, and one of he used to be a key part of our team at Stetson. Um, thanks for the question. I would go ahead and say, uh, all that's built in in the fall, um, based on the fact that we're trying to win positions. So you know, you're out there trying to win the game at the end of the day, and that doesn't change. When you have so much competition, so much depth on a, th on a team, I think it just refines everybody, including myself and the older guys, that much more. When it comes to saying something on Friday, um, to the younger guys that are in the lineup or th that are on the bench with us, it's just just playing our game. What we've practiced and worked worked on for a whole year now, I mean, everybody's dying to play and eager to play. Just play the game you love. The game doesn't change. Trump always says it. We're not playing the opponent. We're playing the game of baseball, you know. So we've been doing it every day for a long time, our whole lives. Nothing changes here. Um, roadblocks are going to come up, but if we focus on one pitch, one game at a time, I think we'll get through it perfectly. Just to add in on that, too. What's up, Nick? Miss you, man. Um, I think having so many older guys throughout the fall and having a lot of transfers come in, um, we've all been able to set the example. And so while those conversations are helpful and, um, inspirational words are, are great to keep guys motivated. I think sometimes even more important is guy the way people are carrying themselves day in and day out, whether that be throughout the fall um, in these scrimmages leading up to the spring. Um, yes, Friday, we're playing a, a team with a different jersey on, but at the same time, we've been trying to have the same mentality of competing week in and week out. Um, so I think from, as a captain and as a leader on the team, I've done my best. And George has done his best to set the best example for how you have to act and prepare to get through a long season. And a lot of the younger guys and the freshmen have done an incredible job of picking that up and starting to build that into their own preparation. And that's something that uh, I'd say Georgie and Mac have always done well is lead by example. And that's something uh, Steve talked about in his book. I would highly advise showing that book to all the freshmen and sophomores on the team, uh, getting some good inspiration from there. And uh, thank you again for your answers. Best Nick, of luck thanks in the season, for the boy. plug, man. That, I didn't pay it. I was awesome. Great. Sales can go up. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I, I think that I, I wish we could open the ballpark up, and we are soon. It's going to happen. But you want to really witness something that's amazing is come to an end of a practice and watch Georgie take care of his position and watch Mac do the first baseline and watch uh, Eric Fago take care of his thing. And it, it's 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 almost um, magical. It's a it's a it's a movie screen happening, a, a play. They just go and they do their things. People pick cups up. They they take care of their business. And I think that that's leading by example. But it sets you just do the little things. That that's what it's all about. Anybody can do the easy things. Anybody can do the things that are fun. These guys are great examples because they do the little things right. You know, and everybody wants to take BP. And everybody wants to throw a bullpen. You don't always want to work on base running. You don't always want to work on bunding, but you have to do the little things right. And I think that that's where these guys are doing such a great job. And what they're basically doing, Nick, to your point of your question is, they're just preparing our guys for crisis management. They're, we're going to fail. We're going to screw it up. And the season doesn't want to go like this. Okay. We want to be able to go up, maybe take a bump because we had a bad game, but keep on going and take a bump and keep on going. And so we're constantly preparing to do the little things right. So we're not going to have a roller coaster of 56 games, which could be mentally draining. Everybody on this call loves baseball. Remember, you can stink at this job seven out of 10 times and you're the best. 
outside of being a weather person, there's no other job that you can fail at that rate and still keep your job. And so like, there's a lot of failure is my point. And so you have to be prepared for that all the time as we go forward. So these guys do a great job of that with the younger guys and leading them. Let's hope for another 18 game win streak coach or, or longer, 20 or more. <laughs> yeah, guys, I, I just want to thank you for that. Um, George and Andrew, you know, thank you. I got Zoe here listening to all that and, uh, from a proud dad, I thank both of you for saying things so I don't have to kick her in the ass. You guys will do it for me. So thank you very much. I really appreciate what you guys said and what you guys have done because it helps, it helps make, make my job easier as a father. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And it, next time Tripper tries to take you to a cheap steak dinner, call me and I'll take you someplace better, I promise you. That might be illegal. We got to make sure we know and say rules. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll clear. We'll clear it first, Mister. Do occasional meal. We'll clear it first. Clear no more. No more uh, sizzler. We're going someplace big time now for that. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, it's what's really nice about this call, and I, I'm seeing you know a lot of supporters. Obviously, Zoe is a future Hatter that's coming here to play soccer and is committed to the school. And um, you know, I see so many former ball players. I mean. Ted Troxel's on this call. I know he was out skiing today, having a powder day at Aspen. Um, Chris Roof, who's a good friend of mine up in New Jersey. Oh, my God, he's got the best high school program at Livingston High School in New Jersey. Jumped on this call. We have some recruits I see on here. I can't mention those guys' names. Um, you know, Jimmy Johnson, who's our super fan. I'm looking at these faces. He will he doesn't miss a game. Uh, you know, obviously, Mayor Apcar. I saw Bob Huth. Uh, one of our VPs on here, um, our CFO of the school. I mean, just such a great group of supporters. I know I'm missing somebody, um, but just it's really unique that there's such a great support system and following uh, of this. And, and honestly, what we try to do every day is we try to uphold that. You know, the, the, the two guys on this call are going to be rock stars for the rest of their career. They're just that good of speakers. They're that good of people. And they reflect on the other people on this team. And Winning the games is a byproduct of these guys being so successful in life and in leadership. And that's where we think that the, the wins will come because these guys do such a good job. And, you know, it's pretty fun as a head coach because I really sit back and kind of just watch it. It's, it's really taking them uh, something on their own. And, and like I said, we're going to have some losses and we're going to have some days that we want to cry. Uh, it's just going to happen. And, uh, and that's the reason that I call some of you that are on this call when I had a bad day and you got to hear Trimper Ben on your shoulder and be like, here he calls again. It's Monday here, morning. I, uh, <laughs> so, I, got, I got somebody else here. There you go. There's Samson. Samson came. He heard your voice, Steve. He had to. Uh, <laughs> it's our team mascot in our dugout if you see that sometimes. So, but, um, but yeah, so I, I appreciate all the people that are on the call and, and supporting as we go forward. So um, I know that there was one other question I wanted to address real quick. Um, I, it came in by a text to me. One of the persons asked about the extra inning rule and speed up rule. Well, in Major League Baseball, you might have heard that they're speeding things up and they're doing kind of the uh, speed up rule by having a runner start at second base in extra innings with no outs. Um, we are toying with that right now. I know Jeff uh, sent me an email about a week and a half ago to see if I would support that. Um, it hasn't been put in place. It can be agreed upon, and I think in conference, we might start seeing that go through as we get to the next week or two. But um, don't be surprised if you see that happening and you're probably like, what the heck's going on? It's basically the last hitter that made the out, the last inning would be going out there and uh, would be, be starting with a runner on second base. It's almost like sudden death, you know. My daughters play hockey and they adapted the NHL rule this year. When they go to overtime, they go three on three, which is insane in hockey. It's just a, a goal scored in 30 seconds. But – so it's kind of a similar thing to speed the game up. So uh, thank you for that question um, as we go forward. So I don't know if we have any other ones, uh, Alex, that came in or not. Yeah, I think we've got time for two more. One, uh, how many more hours will you have to spend watching video for scouting, knowing that you might get bumped to another team or a group of teams? Yeah, I mean, um, one of the things that we do is do a lot of scouting. Um, we do a lot of things with what's called Synergy. It's a program that we have here in the office that – all our computers are hooked up on, and you can watch every kid's at bat their whole entire career. So you really can pick apart something. And so it really takes to get through a three-game series. It's probably like on estimate between our staff, you know, Dave Thurneau, our pitching coach, associate head coach, Joe Mercadante, our recruiting coordinator, hitting coach, 
Brandon Brewer, who is uh, our, our volunteer coach, our infield coach, and, and certainly our, our other staff of, you know, uh, our graduate assistant like uh, Charlie Bartlett and all of our team managers that do such a great job that are in here. It probably takes about 25 to 30 hours of watching and preparing for a weekend series. So, yeah, I can see it getting flipped on a Thursday. We'd be like, oh, my gosh, we got to get back in and try to decipher a team that we didn't think about playing. But, yeah, that, that does go into a lot of it. To that point, too, we've done so much with recruiting on video. We haven't been able to recruit since last, last October of 2019. It's the last time we've been on the road recruiting. But yet we're filling our classes up. We're watching a lot on video. Um, I'm relying on people like Coach Roof, who's on this call, who has called me over and over again and has told me about Brandon Hilton and somebody else that's on our team from up in New Jersey or players he has and sends me down videos. And Coach Roof is in my network of 20 of my most trusted people that if he calls me with a player and says, this is the guy, I don't need to go see him. I know it's going to be a good one. So I think a lot of that video goes not only on their, just our uh, scouting of opponents, but the recruiting that we're doing to try to keep our future classes going for 22, 23, and 24 as we move on. Absolutely. And uh, any, any parents on the call, I know you've got questions about tickets and everything, and I know some communications will probably be going out to you guys as the week goes on about getting tickets for this weekend or anything, any of the other upcoming weekends at home. So I know those will be addressed to you directly. And then finally, before we close out the question portion, this will be the last one. So as alumni, parents, friends, season ticket holders, all that, those of us that can't be there in person right now to support the team at the stadium, how can we best support the baseball program right now? Yeah, I'll let Jeff jump in. Well, I was just going to say the, uh, you know, financial support is always appreciated. Uh, but if you want to watch the games or listen to games, uh, you can go to GoHatters.com. And between Hatter Vision, uh, you'll be able to either hear or see the games. Um, and uh, Ricky, I think Ricky Hazel is still on the call. Ricky maybe can add in if there's any more information in relationship to uh, Hatter Vision. Ricky, are you still on the call? I am. Uh, Hatter Vision will be for all the non-ESPN games, which mostly is going to be the first three weeks of the season. And the rest of our home games, with maybe one exception, will be on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, we'll post information on uh, road games as we get it as we go along. Obviously, the games at Florida and Alabama will be on the SEC Plus network, which is part of the ESPN+. Plus. And uh, the game at Florida State will be on the ACC Network Extra, which is also part of ESPN+. Plus. So you'll get to see a lot of the games on ESPN if you have the ESPN Plus package. Yeah, to answer the question, too, about the tickets real quick, because we do have a ton of parents on the call. I know that we opened up our ARMS software program tonight. Um, each player is getting two tickets. They're putting your names in now. So if you're planning on coming – check with your son, <laughs> make sure they got your name in there. So um, we got that there so for the weekend as we go forward. Um, yeah, the support of just watching uh, is great. And once we get everybody back in here, um, you know, just to speak on the, the financial side, um, you know, Jeff does a great job of supporting us. I know our whole university, Bob Huth is on this call and they have to manage this whole budget. Talk about craziness about all the things that were going on with students on campus, maybe not on campus, maybe, you know, getting shut down. I mean, they had a lot on their plate this year. And I, I've been really fortunate that we do get a lot of people that support us in many different ways, but um, it's really to enhance our program. I want to make that clear. Um, you know, we're not just here turning the lights on because someone goes to a golf tournament. The university supports our athletic programs. They support our music programs. They support our business programs. It's a good experience for students and student athletes. It's an unbelievable experience. And it's because a testament of our administration and, and moving forward. And so enhancement is always a nice thing that that's what that stuff goes for. You know, it might mean a pitching machine or it might mean a steak dinner if you get a good GPA, but that's what really we've, uh, we've been able to do those things. So we really appreciate all the help that everyone gives. I know the parents are the only ones in the stands this weekend. I don't even know if we have security administration. So, you know, we got to be careful with uh, heckling and, you know, we got to be on our best behavior. I know you guys want to go down to the visitors bullpen and, throw spitballs, but we got to be good citizens and good representation also, parents. So, um, but Jeff, I'll speak to that as a joke, so. Yeah, it is a joke. And we will have ticket takers and security officers there and, and we'll make 
making sure that everybody uh, is on their best behavior, which we don't have to worry about, but we will be there anyways. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, before we close it out, everybody, I just want to say thank you all again for taking the time to join us tonight. I know everybody's got busy schedules. There's a lot going on these days, so we appreciate you joining the call tonight. And we certainly appreciate your support of the Stetson Baseball Program. Like everybody said, it takes a lot to, to make all this happen. We've got a great coaching staff, great administrators, great players. Georgie and Andrew, you guys are awesome. I can't wait to watch you guys ball out this season. It's going to be a great year for Stetson Baseball. And I'm going to turn it over to Steve really quickly to lead us in a toast to the season as we close it out. That's right. This is a toast. So um, I do have my, my water here. You guys are more than welcome. Georgie, no. Yeah, I, I, I got a bottle of scotch right for you, Steve. Thanks. Yeah, it's water only, my man. <laughs> so, there you go, Jeff. There you go. You see it? There you go. <laughs> I'd like to lead a toast um, to all the fans and supporters that we have here that makes this happen. Um, we cannot do it without you. Our team, our players, our staff, our athletic department, our university. Can't thank you enough. Um, here's to everybody's health um, and to a successful Stetson athletic season and Stetson baseball season as we move forward. So let's toast and bump glasses. <laughs> All right, again, thank you, everybody, and y'all have a good night. Go Hatters. Go Hatters. We'll see everybody right. soon. Go Hatters. Go Hatters.